Good morning. We're going to continue on with the BFG today. We're going to read two more chapters. We're going to read um, The Snatch and The Cave. Uh, these are short chapters again, and I will be um, giving you a little something to think about and answer like I did yesterday. Hopefully you are enjoying the story so far. Like I said, this is my favorite book from whenever I was a kid, so I really hope you like this one. So we're going to go ahead and start with chapter three. And if you remember, yesterday when we ended, Sophie went uh, running back to her bed and hid under a blanket. I remember I said, I wouldn't want to hide there. And I think a lot of you said that you would go hide somewhere else uh, so that he couldn't find you. Um, I think he'll find you in your bed. So let's see what happens. Under the blanket, Sophie waited. After a minute or so, she lifted a corner of the blanket and peeped out. For the second time that night, her blood froze to ice and she wanted to scream, but no sound came out. There at the window, with the curtains pushed aside, was the enormous, long, pale, wrinkly face of the giant person staring in. The flashing black eyes were fixed on Sophie's bed. The next moment, a huge hand with pale fingers came snaking in through the window. This was followed by an arm, an arm as thick as a tree trunk, and the arm, the hand, the fingers were reaching out across a room towards Sophie's bed. This time, Sophie really did scream, but only for a second because very quickly, the huge hand clamped down over her blanket and the scream was smothered by the bedclothes. Sophie, crouching underneath the blanket, felt strong fingertips grasping hold of her and then she was lifted up from her bed, blanket at all, and whisked out of the window. If you can think of anything more terrifying than that happening to you in the middle of the night, then let's hear about it. The awful thing was that Sophie knew exactly what was going on, although she couldn't see it happening. She knew that a monster, or giant, with an enormous long pale wrinkly face and dangerous eyes had plucked her from her bed in the middle of the witching hour and was now carrying her out through the window smothered in a blanket. What actually happened next was this. When the giant got hold of hold sorry, when the giant had got Sophie outside, he arranged the blanket so that he could grasp all four corners of it at once in one of his huge hands with Sophie imprisoned inside. In the other hand, he seized the suitcase and the long trumpet thing, and off he ran. Sophie, by squirming around inside the blanket, managed to push the top of her head out through a little gap just below the giant's hand. She stared around her. She saw the village houses rushing by on both sides. The giant was sprinting down the high street. He was running so fast, his black cloak was streaming out behind him like the wings of a bird. Each stride he took was a lo as long as a tennis court. Out of the village he ran, and soon they were racing across the moonlit fields. The hedges divided the fields were no problem to the giant. He simply strode over them. A wide river appeared in his path. He crossed it in one flying stride. Sophie crouched in the blanket, peering out. She was being bumped against the giant's leg like a sack of potatoes. Over the fields and hedges and rivers they went, and after a while, a frightening thought came into Sophie's head. The giant is running fast, she told herself, because he is hungry and he wants to, wants to get home as quickly as possible and then he'll have me for breakfast. Here you can see the giant is running across there and has Sophie in the blanket. So that was chapter three. Now we're gonna start on chapter four, the cave. The giant ran on and on, but now a curious change took place in his way of running. He seemed suddenly to go into a higher gear. Faster and faster he went, and soon he was traveling at such a speed that the landscape became blurred. The wind stung Sophie's cheeks and made her eyes water. It whipped her head back and whistled in her ears. She could no longer feel the, great, the giant's feet touching the ground. She had a weird sensation they were flying. It was impossible to tell whether they were over land or sea. This giant had some sort of magic in his legs. The, the wind rushing against Sophie's face became so strong that she had to duck down again into the blanket to prevent her head from being blown away. 
Well, or was it really possible that they were crossing oceans? It certainly felt that way to Sophie. She crouched in the blanket and listened to the howling of the wind and went on for what seemed like hours. Then, all at once, the wind stopped its howling. The pace began to slow down. Sophie could feel the giant's feet pounding again over the earth. She poked her head up out of the blanket to have a look. They were in a country of thick forest and rushing rivers. The giant had definitely slowed down and was now running more normally. Although normal was a silly word to use describing a giant, a galloping giant. He leaped over a dozen rivers. He went rattling through a great forest, then down into a valley and up over a range of hills as bare as concrete. As soon as he was galloping over a desolate wasteland that was not quite of this earth, the ground was flat and pale and yellow Great lumps of blue rock were scattered around. Okay, I'm going to pause there for a second. I'm actually going to reread that section. Um, we're, we're doing some describing of the land they're at. Um, today, if you have some art supplies with you, I want you to try to draw the scene that Sophie is seeing right now. Okay, so I'm going to go back to it. They just got to um, a new area. They got out of this forest area. They're going into a new area. So I want you guys to try to draw this scene for me. Draw the setting here. Let me find where I was. Then down into a valley and up over a range of hills as bare as concrete. And soon he was galloping over a desolate wasteland that was not quite of this earth. The ground was flat and pale yellow. Great lumps of blue rock were scattered around, and dead trees stood everywhere like skeletons. The moon had long since disappeared, and now the dawn was breaking. Sophie, still peering out from the blanket, saw suddenly ahead of her a great craggy mountain. The mountain was dark blue and all around it the sky was gushing and glistening with light. Bits of pale gold were flying among delicate, among delicate frosty white flakes of cloud. And over to one side, the rim of the morning sun was coming up red as blood. Okay, so that gave you some pretty specific colors to deal with in there. Hopefully you picked up on those. What color were the rocks? What color was the mountain? What color is the sun? What color was the land? Try to draw that picture out if you have your art supplies with you today. And um, if you can, take a picture and we'll see if we can find a way of posting it in um, Google Classroom here. Um, I'll see if I can't find a way for you guys to, to do that. If I figure it out, I'll let you know how, how to do that. But if you can, try to draw that picture with the sun and the mountain and the rocks and the dead trees and use the colors that I use to describe it. If you need to, rewind and go back to that spot. All right, we're gonna finish up this story here. Right beneath the mountain, the giant stopped. He was puffing mightily. His great chest was heaving in and out. He paused to catch his breath. Directly in front of them, lying against one side of the mountain, Sophie could see a massive round stone. It was as big as a house. The giant reached out and rolled the stone to one side as easily as if it had been a football, and now, where the stone had been, there appeared a vast black hole. The hole was so large, the giant didn't even have to duck his head as he went in. He strode into the black hole, still carrying Sophie in one hand, the trumpet, and the suitcase in the other. As soon as he was inside, he stopped and turned and rolled the great stone back into place so that the entrance to his secret cave was completely hidden from outside. Now the entrance had been sealed up. There was not a glint of light inside the cave. All was black. Sophie felt herself being lowered to the ground. Then the giant let go of the blanket completely. His footsteps moved away. Sophie sat there in the dark, shivering with fear. He is getting ready to eat me, she told herself. He will probably eat me raw, just as I am. Or perhaps he will boil me first. Or he will have me fried. He will drop me like a rasher of bacon into some gigantic frying pan sizzling with fat. A blaze of light suddenly lit up the whole place. Sophie blinked and stared. She saw the enormous cavern with 
a high rocky roof. The walls on either side were lined with shelves, and on the shelves there stood row upon row of glass jars. There were jars everywhere. They were piled up in the corners. They filled every nook and cranny of the cave. In the middle of the floor there was a table, twelve feet high, and a chair to match. The giant took off his black cloak and hung it against the wall. Sophie knew, saw that the, under the cloak he was wearing a sort of collarless shirt and a dirty old leather waistcoat that didn't seem to have any buttons. His trousers were faded green and were far too short in the legs. On his bare feet he was wearing a pair of ridiculous sandals that for some reason had holes cut along each side with a large hole at the end where his toes stuck out. Sophie, crouching on the floor of the cave in her nightie, gazed back at him through thick, steel-rimmed glasses. She was trembling like a leaf in the wind, and a finger of ice was running up and down the length of her spine. Ha! shouted the giant, walking forward and rubbing his hands together. What has us got here? His booming voice rolled around the walls of the cave like a burst of thunder. Okay, that's where we're going to end today. We're going to find out what happens with Sophie in this giant tomorrow. Like I said, try to draw that picture for me of the setting. And um, once I figure out how you can post pictures, we might have to post pictures in uh, Class Dojo instead under portfolios. Or um, if your parents can post them in the stories section, I'll figure out how to do that. And uh, I'll post it on here. I'll comment under here how to do that. Hope you're enjoying your day. I'm gonna try to get outside for a little bit before it rains. Um, I'm kind of sick of being inside. I'm sure you guys are too. I will talk to you guys a little later. Have a great day.